everyone, welcome again. So today's lesson will be on shipwrecks and salvage option. And in the previous lessons we've looked at the ocean and how gases and different substances diffuse into the ocean and what their concentrations are like and their solubilities. And so from there, we're going to now have a look at the corrosion of metals at the ocean floor. Okay, so now we're actually going to try and focus a little bit more on shipwrecks now. And we're going to try and see, well, it, can we make any predictions about corrosion at the very depths of the ocean compared to at shallower oceans, shallower areas of the ocean? So some predictions. Due to the environment at the bottom of the ocean, we can sort of make a few predictions about corrosion at this depth. Okay, so we know a little bit about that environment, so we can sort of make some predictions. Because the temperature is very low, we would expect corrosion to be very slow. So the temperature is only about 4 degrees Celsius, so we expect that corrosion won't happen very quickly because the temperature will be quite low. And because there's limited O2 availability, remembering from previous lesson we talked about oxygen content and oxygen concentration at depth, because there's limited O2 available, we would also expect corrosion to be low because oxygen uh, is one of the main contributors to corrosion in metals. So we want oxygen to be as low as po we want oxygen to be low if we want low corrosion. Now, in terms of salinity, the other thing that's present in the ocean, well, salinity doesn't vary too much with depth, so we don't really expect to see any increased corrosion or decreased corrosion due to an increase or decrease in salinity because it'll be very similar to the salinity of a shallower region. So we're not too worried about the salinity. Okay. Now we'll talk about more about low temperature. So with the temperature of the water low, it is predicted that the corrosion will be really low as well because the temperature is low, corrosion will be low. That's the, that's the hypothesis. And the reason for that hypothesis is that the, chemical, the kinetic energy of the particles will be a lot lower and therefore the reactants won't have the sufficient energy to react at the ocean depths. Right? So it won't, simply won't have the energy because the temperature is too low. Similarly, if you have a battery, so let's go back to your production of materials. If you're in a very cold environment, very, very cold, your batteries sometimes don't work in your car. They don't work so well. That's why cars sometimes struggle to, um, to start up in very cold weather because they can't generate the current because the battery is actually struggling um, because there's not enough energy to have those redox reactions happening inside the battery. Similarly here, because the temperature is so low, they don't have enough energy to sort of to react in the redox reaction, they can't corrode because you don't have enough energy. If you don't have enough energy to react, there's not going to be any reaction anyway. Okay. Now, if we move from the temperature to the limited O2 availability, then since the oxygen can't diffuse that deep into the ocean, then we expect corrosion to be reduced. Now, O2, as we know, is a very significant element in metal corrosion. And since its concentration is so low, the corresponding uh, sorry, the corresponding corrosion rate will be very low as well because there's no oxygen available. Okay, so that's sort of what we predict. Now, since the temperature of the shallow surface water is higher, and the O2 concentration is also quite high because of the constant mixing with the air, then corrosion should take place much more rapidly in the shallow regions compared to the depths. So the salinity doesn't vary with greatly with depth, so that's not going to affect our corrosion too much. Okay. So that concludes today's lesson on corrosion at depth. We've looked at the predictions at what corrosion will be like at the bottom of the ocean. And so in future lessons, we'll actually look at what is corrosion like at the bottom of the ocean. Evidence um, to, sort of, to either support or disprove our, hypothesi our hypotheses here. Okay. So we'll move on to the question segment, and we'll see what we can do with that. So question 11. Briefly identify the relationship between temperature and reaction rate. Okay. So we should know this by now from um, various other studies throughout chemistry. So 
an increase in temperature increases the rate of reaction, both forward and backward. Because the increased, rate, uh, increased temperature gives you increased kinetic energy. And increased kinetic energy means that we can collide more frequently, giving you increased reaction rate. Okay. So question 12, which of the following best explains the effect of low temperatures at great depths on the rate of corrosion of a metal? Okay. So the first one is no effect because corrosion is not a chemical reaction. So that's probably not true. Corrosion rates stay the same because the temperatures at great depths are constant and the stable environment preserves the wrecks. Probably not again, because it will get colder as you go down. No effect because the, react the rate of corrosion is not dependent on temperature but on bacteria. Again, that's not 100% correct. So corrosion rates decrease as low temperatures slow down. The chemical reaction is likely to be the answer, and there it is. Because there's lower t energy available, there's lower reaction rate. Simple as that. So at the low temperatures of the ocean floor, the corrosion is predicted to be very slow. Explain why we predict this. Again, we've talked about this a lot, but we're going to keep trying to force this issue because it's an important thing to know. So the kinetic energy of the particles is really reduced when the temperature is very low. And therefore, the reactants would not have sufficient energy to react at the ocean depths. Okay? Additionally, the mobility of particles is also reduced at low temperatures, which will also hinder the reaction or the corrosion, because they're simply not mobile as if they were in a very hot substance. So the particle won't be able to move as much simply because it's cold. And that will, that's also related to the kinetic energy, and that will help to slow the corrosion. Explain why shallow water is more favorable for corrosion compared to deep water. You've got a higher temperature. Since the sun can warm the water in the shallow areas, or more importantly, it will warm the ocean floor, which will then warm the water. Then the water in the shallow areas, the kinetic energy of the particles may be sufficient to react rapidly. So we could have enough energy to actually react. And because it's in contact with the air, there's an increased oxygen content. So there will be a much higher O2 concentration compared to deep water. So those are the two reasons why shallow water is more favorable for corrosion than, say, deep water. Okay. Lastly, explain the trend in this graph. So we've got temperature going up, rate of corrosion in this axis, and then we've got a peak at about 40 maybe degrees Celsius, and then it decreases after. So interesting that that happens. So as the temperature increases, the rate of corrosion increases. So we've got rate of corrosion increasing. But when the temperature exceeds 40 degrees, the rate of corrosion decreases. Okay? Now that's an interesting one. Because we thought that if you just keep increasing the temperature, you should just keep getting an increased rate of corrosion. But it doesn't. So the initial increase in rate of corrosion occurs because increasing temperature causes faster chemical reactions. Okay, we've talked about that ad nauseum this lesson, so we won't go into any more depth about that. However, increase in temperature of the water also causes the solubility of gas to decrease. So herein lies the great problem. As you increase the temperature, the solubility of the gas decreases as well. So you're losing gas back to the atmosphere. So you're losing reactants, which could slow your reaction rate. By about 40 degrees, the concentration of dissolved oxygen in the salt water is too low, so this corrosion slows down. So once we get here, once we exceed this 40 degree mark, we're losing all this oxygen so that it can't react with our metal, so there's no corrosion. And so that's why it dips after 40 degrees, because it's just forcing all the oxygen and gases out of the water and back into the atmosphere. Okay. So that concludes today's lesson on corrosion predictions at depth. So we've looked at what are the predictions that we'll get when we look at corrosion at great depths. So what are we expecting to see? And in the future lessons, we'll look at what actually happens at the bottom of the ocean and how does it relate to our predictions um, that we've given today. So I look forward to seeing you at our next lesson.